humanoid robots will be the biggest industry, or the biggest product ever, um, bigger than cell phones or anything else. But, to, but AI and humanoid robots will actually eliminate poverty. And Tesla won't be the only one that makes them. I think my prediction is that work will be optional. 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 What work is like, optional. Um, now, between now and then, there's actually a lot of work to get to that point. Two new robots just emerged that could make Boston Dynamics Atlas obsolete, and one of them might be coming for your favorite sport. The first robot has a projector screen for a face, while the second packs more torque than a Formula One race car engine. But here's where things get wild. Researchers just released footage of humanoid robots playing basketball with moves so fluid some people think it's fake. But here's where things get wild. Researchers just released footage of humanoid robots playing basketball with moves so fluid some people think it's fake. Let's start with the Fibot C1 Companion Humanoid, a robot that's been flying completely under the radar until now. This isn't your typical humanoid robot. Standing at 128 centimeters, or about 4 feet 2 inches tall, and weighing just 28 kilograms or 62 pounds, it's significantly lighter than most humanoids on the market. To put that in perspective, Boston Dynamics Atlas weighs 80 kilograms or 176 pounds, nearly three times heavier. The C1 features 25 degrees of freedom throughout its body, two degrees in the head for pan and tilt movements, five degrees in each arm covering shoulders, elbows, and wrists, one degree of freedom in the waist for rotation, and six degrees in each leg for hip, knee, and ankle movements. But what really sets this robot apart is that projector display built right into its face, something we haven't seen in any other humanoid robot. This facial projection system isn't just for show. It enables the robot to display content for visual or educational presentations and even share enhanced emotional expressions with full-color customization. The implications here are fascinating. Instead of trying to create realistic human-like faces that often fall into the uncanny valley, they've gone for a completely different approach that could actually be more effective for human-robot interaction. Wipe out half of all entry-level white-collar jobs and spike unemployment to 10 to 20 percent in the next one to five years. Experiment, and one way to think about Anthropic is that it's a little bit trying to put bumpers or guardrails. There was going to be this incredible transformation, and people didn't have enough of an opportunity to to adapt. ...companies, where they knew there were dangers, and they, they didn't talk about them, and certainly did not prevent them. Under the hood, the C1 runs on an onboard Intel Core i7 processor, managing a stereo RGB sensor array in its head. This setup enables deep perception and 3D environmental mapping capabilities. The legs house nine axis IMU sensors, combining accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer data to provide real time orientation information. With a 244 Newton meter torque output and a 6 amp hour battery, it can operate for about 4 hours continuously. The positioning of this robot is clearly as a companion rather than a worker. They're marketing it for home use, personal assistance, and social interaction. The lighter weight makes it safer around children and elderly users, while the projection face could be less intimidating than more human like alternatives. Pricing remains unknown, but given the specifications and target market, we might expect something in the $5,000 to $10,000 range when it eventually launches, likely in 2026 or later, based on its current development stage. Humanoid robots will be the biggest industry, or the biggest product ever, um, bigger than cell phones or anything else. But, to, but AI and humanoid robots will actually eliminate poverty. And Tesla won't be the only one that makes them. I think my prediction is that work will be optional. Optional. Optional what work is like, optional. Um, now between now and then, there's actually a lot of work to get to that point. Now let's talk about the M1, Fibot's high-performance general-purpose humanoid that takes everything to the next level. Standing at 172 centimeters or 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighing under 60 kilograms or 132 pounds, this robot is built for serious work. It features 32 degrees of freedom, not counting the fingers, two in the head, seven in each arm, two in the waist, and seven in each leg. Yes, it has five-fingered hands, adding even more dexterity beyond those 32 degrees of freedom. But here's where the M1 gets really impressive. It can carry a two-arm load of 20 kilograms or 44 pounds and over 50 kilograms or 110 pounds on its back. That's 83% of its own body weight. The secret lies in its proprietary FARC series quasi-direct drive integrated cycloid joints. 
These joints deliver an astounding 5 and 30 newton meters of peak joint torque. To understand how powerful that is, it actually exceeds the torque output of a Formula One race car engine. These specialized joints provide instantaneous position feedback and virtually error-free performance. But the essence of getting, of revolutionizing space travel is reusability. Uh, because I always think of like, who, who wouldn't want their own personal C-3PO R2-D2? Oh yeah? Electric cars, there, there weren't any electric cars when we started making them really. You couldn't buy any, to the best of my knowledge. They're designed as single modules containing the drive motor, reducer, and dual encoders all in one package for easier maintenance. This modular approach means if something goes wrong, you can swap out individual components rather than dealing with complex repairs. The M1 can walk at speeds over 2 meters per second, that's more than 6 feet per second or about 4.5 miles per hour. This makes it faster than most current commercial humanoids and comparable to a brisk human walking pace. Runtime exceeds two hours of continuous operation using two swappable batteries that can be hot swapped in just 15 seconds, meaning theoretically unlimited operation time with spare batteries. For its brain, the M1 uses an NVIDIA Jetson Orin NX delivering 100 trillion operations per second of AI performance. This enables real-time neural network processing for navigation and manipulation tasks. The sensor suite includes 3D LiDAR, stereo RGB cameras, and high dynamic range cameras for comprehensive environmental mapping and object recognition. The M1 runs proprietary motion control software integrated with its custom hardware. Unlike the C1 which targets home robotics, the M1 is designed for industrial logistics, manufacturing, and professional service roles. This positioning makes sense given its higher payload capacity, faster movement speed, and more robust construction. Well, one of the one of the most data intensive, one of the most intensive computation things that the world does in cloud is data processing. CPUs were 90% of the world's supercomputers, top 500 supercomputers, six years ago. Demand for computing versus the amount of computation we can get out of general purpose computing is really challenging. Many of the internet companies can build an enormous number of GPU supercomputers just doing that. Now about those basketball playing robots. Researchers at FizHoy which stands for Physics-Based Simulation and Diverse Human-Object Interactions, released footage showing what appears to be unitary G1 humanoids performing various basketball moves from jump shots to running layups. The movements look incredibly fluid and natural, leading some viewers to question whether the footage is real or simulated. The technology behind this involves a three-layer architecture. First, an LLM agent breaks down plain English commands and selects appropriate tools while maintaining spatial context. Then, a motion generator creates short horizon collision aware trajectories from visual input and task instructions. Finally, a tracking controller executes these commands using reinforcement learning trained controllers that work across all terrains. The key innovation is the clean interfaces between layers, allowing each component to be tested and improved independently. The training strategy uses simulation data and synthetic data first, then adds real-world data only for specific gaps. This approach means the breadth comes from simulation, while precision comes from targeted real-world refinement. If this basketball footage is real, and the technical details suggest it could be, we're looking at a major leap in humanoid robot capabilities. The question becomes whether robots should compete with humans in sports, or if we'll see completely separate leagues emerge. The physical advantages of robots, no fatigue, perfect repeatability, superhuman reaction times, could fundamentally change how we think about athletic competition. In a way, it sounds crazy, right? But here's the way I think about it. I use this phrase called the compressed 21st century. We get 10 times the rate of progress and therefore compress all the medical progress that was going to happen. One of the things that's been powerful in a positive way about the models is their ability to kind of act on their own. You know, I want to warn people. I want people to know about this. And, you know, some of that is going to lead to, to people saying, well, what's your plan? We're really going to try our best to lead the way here, set an example, maximize the upside. Looking at the broader picture, both Fibot robots represent different philosophies in humanoid design. The C1 takes a companion-first approach with its lighter weight, projection face, and home-focused features. The M1 goes for raw capability with its Formula One beating torque, high payload capacity, and industrial applications. 
Neither includes pricing or exact release dates yet, though 2026-2027 seems likely based on current development stages. The real breakthrough might be in that modular robotic system using natural language reasoning. By using a modular toolkit approach rather than manual data collection, it bypasses traditional training bottlenecks. Watching it figure out how to lean left to pick up a toy by combining different skills from its toolkit shows how robots are becoming more adaptable and intelligent. These developments signal a shift in humanoid robotics. The way computing was done in the past was largely retrieval-based computing. Mm -hmm. Somebody typed in, software is going to be generated in real time. It's generative based on the context, based on the circumstance. Everybody's jobs will be different. That I think that, that's for sure. Uh, how, how the students learn will be different. We're moving past simple demonstrations toward robots that can actually perform useful tasks in real environments. Whether it's the C1 helping around the house with its friendly projection face, the M1 handling industrial tasks with its superhuman strength, or robots potentially joining basketball teams, we're entering an era where humanoids aren't just impressive demos, but practical tools. The thing we have in mind is, uh, you know, and this could be, you know, an assistant in your workplace. It's a, you know, it's a task it does over like a day where, you know, you, you say, you know, we're going to implement this product feature. Um, and just like a human, the model goes off and does a bunch of those things and then checks in with you every once in a while. So you think of it as having, having all, the, all the piping, all the inputs and outputs of a human operating virtually that a very strong version of these capabilities will come this year, um, and it may be in the first half of this year. The question isn't whether these robots will impact our daily lives. It's how quickly they'll become commonplace. With companies like Fibot pushing boundaries in both companion and industrial applications, and research showing robots mastering complex physical tasks like basketball, we're witnessing the early stages of a robotic revolution that could reshape everything from manufacturing to sports to home life. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.